Or Chris Kelso, good morning, Houston. How's everyone doing out there? We have a great show lined up. Kevin, unfortunately, can't be with us today. He's out making the world a greater place. But we have a great show lined up nonetheless. First on the ticket, we've got Nancy Sloan. She's the vice president of Gap International. Nancy, how you doing? Fine, thank you. You know, let everybody know who's listening out there a little bit about who you are and what you do. Great. Um, I uh, work at uh, Gap International. We're a management consulting firm uh, here in Philadelphia. I've been with the company over 20 years. And uh, we work with uh, leaders in organizations to achieve extraordinary results in their businesses. You know, that's that's something very interesting because, in fact, one of the subjects we're going to talk about, there was actually a, a, a notation here about how Europro grew sales from $800 million to $1.5 billion. And one of the things individuals are always looking at doing, especially whether it be a small entrepreneur or a large company, is increase revenue. That is the key to any major or minor business, correct? That's right. Exactly. Obviously, the more revenue you make, the more profit you make. At least that's what we hope, right? (laughs) That is correct. Unless it's poorly managed, then it's a different story. (laughs) That's another story. Exactly. Well, you know, talk a little bit about it. You know, one of the things that we, we always like to talk about, what are some of the things to look at? More importantly, let, let's talk about maybe a little bit about how, you know, the example of Europro grew from $800 million to $1.5 billion. What, what goes on in regards to making that happen? How does, how, how does that work? Yeah, very, um, you know, kind of at a 30-foot view, Chris, um, what, what we work with our clients on is having them set goals that are extraordinary for them. And I, I, again, I don't mean pie in the sky, but I mean something that would be very desirable for them to achieve. And we work backwards from the future of that goal to, to set milestones that they would achieve. Now, we also work with people's thinking. How are they thinking about that goal? Because it's very revealing when you get into people's thinking about how they think about performance. So the more you can change people's thinking, at least point to that, point out to them where their thinking isn't a match for that goal, the more they can change the way they think so they can take the appropriate actions to produce those extraordinary results. You know, and, and it sounds very, very simple and, and very, very uh, common, but, you know, one of the things, in, in fact, I'm a businessman and I, and I talk about this all the time, is that sometimes goal setting is one of the hardest things for an individual or for a corporation to do because you need to get buy-in all up and down the management chain and through the entire organization. And sometimes, as you mentioned, it's the thinking that has to change to achieve those results. You know, you have to aim big, but also there's a whole lifeline and a whole uh, supply chain, you know, within your organization that also has to think along those same lines. Absolutely. And, and you're bringing up, you know, one, one of our biggest key ticket items is that, is that uh, buy-in. Right, we work with people on 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 getting that buy-in from the different ranks of the organization. Who are those critical con- constituencies in your organization that need to buy in and walk this path with you, so that that collective thinking is changing in the organization to produce those extraordinary results? And when you engage with a typical client of yours, how does that engagement work? How how does that start off with? And then more importantly, is how do you engage to get that buy-in? up and down those key, key areas? We work in, uh, in many ways. We work, uh, we have a, um, uh, our GAP Consulting, which is, uh, you know, large client system uh, performance work, uh, all the way to small companies, small entrepreneurs, or key people in smaller organizations. And we work in different ways so that, you know, pr- you know price points, et cetera, so it's affordable. Um, all of our work is based on the same methodology, which is really looking at um, what's that goal that you want to produce, and then we create that together, and then we look at, okay, let's get into what is the current thinking systems of the people that are critical, that touch that goal, so that we can start taking apart some of those uh, key thinking areas that need to be changed, and so you can produce that extraordinary result. We and work in a course format. We work in a large system format. So just depending on uh, the size of the company and the leader, that's the, that would be the path for them. You know, and, and one of the things you mentioned is really, really interesting right there. It's, it's about changing of thinking. Obviously, one of the things that I've seen, you know, my background from a long time ago was actually performance and process improvement. 
before I got into what I do now, which is actually in the mortgage industry. And and but but <laughs> but one of the things that I've taken over to what I've always said is is you can if you dream big, you can only go as big as what the organization will allow you to do. And it's that changing of the thinking, it's that mentality and the buy-in, as you mentioned, of getting everybody working towards a common goal. And, and then it's also about about breaking down those fiefdoms that everyone seems to have within larger organizations to say, hey, guess what? We're not saying you have to change your role specifically. It's how does your role fit within the larger goals that the organization is looking at achieving? And ultimately, as you mentioned right there, it's about achieving greater success in the sales arena. You know, if you grow yes. revenue, guess what? You're going to be able to grow and add a lot more to the bottom line to, and be able to provide more benefits across up and down that supply chain that we talk about. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, our three principles are, you know, just just pretty much what you were just talking about. Um, the The leader and the leadership teams in the organization are looking at their thinking and how they would need to change given the result they have in mind to produce. And then there's the organizational mindset that's got to be addressed as well. That's where the leaders go out and are gaining that buy-in, that critical buy-in of people. And then that, that maniacal focus on outcomes. What is that extraordinary result that we are all out to produce together? And how do we band together to do it? So those kind of uh, buy-in conversations that are just critical uh, that need to happen. And, you know, and what's, what's the greatest resistance? I mean, I know what I used to see, but obviously a lot has changed in my 12 years of not doing it. What are some of the greatest resistance you see nowadays when you engage with organizations and getting that mindset to change? Well, it's, you know, I, I would say that, you know, you have a leader that sets a goal and then you get a lot of pushback about how it can't be done because it's never been done before. And you get resistance around people actually looking at themselves because they do have to change their thinking. So, it, you know, kind of the mirror gets turned on you. And there, there can be some pushback and resistance to that because people are, are used to kind of pointing the finger outward. You know, the, the old marketing and sales rivalry, right? right. Well, marketing blames sales and sales blames marketing. In our working with these areas, we're having them look at themselves and how do they change themselves and their thinking? So they actually come together as a unit to produce this, this extraordinary result. We do this in our executive challenge course and in our corporate work. Um, we have our executive challenge course in Houston, where we work mostly with our entrepreneurs and key people in smaller organizations. Well, you know, Nancy, time flies when you're having fun, and we are definitely, this is a subject matter I could speak about all day long. Unfortunately, we're limited to a certain amount of time on this radio show, but I do want you to be able to give out your name and how we can contact you again. So if anybody who's listening, and I know we have a lot of listeners out there who want to engage on this, can give you a call. How can we reach you? Great. I appreciate it. You can find more uh, out about uh, GAP International and our executive challenge course on our website, gapinternational.com. That's GapInternational.com. That was Nancy Sloan. She's the vice president of Gap International. Nancy, thanks a lot for being on board today. Thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate it. Likewise. For all those listening, we are coming up against a break right now, but stay tuned. We'll be right back. 